In this procedure, we will demonstrate a surgical technique that can be used to correct a hallux valgus deformity referred to as the lapidus procedure. In the lapidus procedure, the first metatarsal will be fused to the medial cuneiform. The anatomical landmarks are the long extensor tendon, the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, and the first metatarsal cuneiform joint located approximately in the region highlighted by the marker. The extensor tendon and the medial eminence are used to determine the location of the skin incision. The incision is placed just medial to the long extensor tendon between the extensor tendon and the medial eminence as shown. In addition to fusing the first metatarsal cuneiform joint, we will additionally perform soft tissue adjustments distally at the metatarsal phalangeal joint, including the lateral release and a medial capsule repair. The skin incision is then made. Retractors are then used to expose the underlying structures. Soft tissue dissection is then performed in the usual manner. The lateral capsule release is then performed. To perform the lateral release, we first incised the lateral capsule. An elevator was then placed underneath the metatarsal head between the head of the metatarsal bone and the sesamoids. The adductor tendon and the fibula sesamoid ligament can now be easily visualized as shown. The adductor tendon is then detached from the sesamoid using the so-called J-stroke cut. When using the J-stroke, the surgical blade is inserted into the interspace, around the tendon, and up at the sesamoids. The motion of the blade resembles a J-stroke. After the J-stroke is performed and the tendon has been dissected from the metatarsal, the tendon will be completely released as shown. Now that the full lateral release has been performed, the tendon has been transected, the sesamoids have been freed, and the lateral capsule for the first metatarsal phalangeal joint has been incised. Now the first metatarsal phalangeal joint can be easily placed into varus as shown. If it is not possible to manipulate the first metatarsal phalangeal joint into varus, it will be necessary to look for additional soft tissue structures that prevent the varus angulation of the big toe. The soft tissue dissection and joint exposure is then continued in the usual manner. The first metatarsal cuneiform joint is then exposed. The joint can be easily identified by observing the puckering of the joint capsule during manipulation of the foot, as shown. The area surrounding the metatarsal cuneiform joint is then incised and the joint can be fully visualized. The joint is now fully visible and gives full access to the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform.
The primary goal of the plan correction is to reduce the intermetatarsal angle. Therefore, we must shift and reangulate the first metatarsal and normalize the intermetatarsal angle. We will first remove the cartilage from the first metatarsal perpendicular to the long axis. We will then remove a small wedge from the medial cuneiform with an approximate thickness of only 2 millimeters. The base of the wedge will be lateral and the cut should be perpendicular to the long axis of the second metatarsal. It is very important not to take too much bone as this will create excessive shortening of the first ray. A standard saw blade is then used to remove the cartilage from the first metatarsal. This cut is made parallel to the joint surface of the first metatarsal as shown. We will now perform the corrective wedge cut on the cuneiform. We will be aiming the saw at the medial corner of the cuneiform on the medial side and extend a line from this marker point that will be almost perpendicular to the second metatarsal as shown. The osteotomized pieces of bone and cartilage must now be removed. From the medial cuneiform, it is clear that a minimal quantity of bone was removed to prevent excessive shortening of the first ray. The fragments from the first metatarsal are now removed. The removed fragments can now both be visualized. You can again see the cuneiform fragment, and now you can also see the removed metatarsal fragment, which was removed in several pieces. Looking at the joint, the cut surfaces are shown. The first metatarsal phalangeal joint can now be put into varus, and the osteotomy can be temporarily reduced illustrating the desired final position of the first ray. This is the corrected position. Since the first ray was shortened through the removal of the articular surfaces, the shortening must be compensated by displacing the metatarsal plantarly or downward as shown. Again, you can see the initial neutral position and the position of the metatarsal after being displaced plantarly to compensate for shortening of the first ray. A step off of approximately two millimeters is therefore created. The hardware fixation will be performed by first inserting an ASIS-3 4.0 millimeter cannulated screw for compression, followed by a variax foot oblique T-plate. Temporary K-wire fixation is now performed. The entrance point should be placed approximately 1.5 centimeters distal from the osteotomy site in the dorsolateral part of the metatarsal, aiming at the tuberosity of the navicular as indicated. The K-wire will be inserted in the direction indicated. This represents the desired final position of the ASNIS-3 screw. In order to prevent intraoperative rotation from occurring, a second K-wire can be inserted at an angle that crosses the initial K-wire as shown. Countersinking can then be performed using the cannulated as is three countersink over the K-wire as shown. Screw measurement can then be performed by sliding a direct depth measuring gauge directly over the inserted K-wire. Care must be taken to ensure that the final position of the K-wire 
corresponds to the final desired position of the screw. In this case, a 36 millimeter long screw will be used. An Asnes 3 4.0 millimeter diameter self-drilling and self-tapping cannulated screw is now inserted over the K-wire as shown. The cannulated screwdriver is then used to insert the screw into bone. The screw is advanced until the screw head makes contact with the cortex. Before final tightening, the opposing crossing K-wire must be removed as it will prevent compression from occurring. The Asnes 3 4.0 mm screw is now tightened. The K-wire is then removed. The fusion site is now completely closed and the first ray is now in a correct position. To add to the stability already provided by the Asnes 3 screw, we will now implant a Variax foot oblique T-plate. A small amount of bone will be shaved from the medial surface of the metatarsal cuneiform joint, which will aid with plate placement. The Variax foot oblique T-plate will be used with the head of the plate being placed on the cuneiform and the tail of the plate being placed on the metatarsal. The plate is pre-bent in a plantar direction and corresponds to the plantar positioning of the first ray. The plate is then provisionally placed on bone. The plate should be placed as plantar as possible. Bending of the dorsalmost aspect of the plate can then be performed to further facilitate plate placement. When bending Variax foot plates, it is important that the dedicated Variax foot plate benders be used. The benders are designed to protect the locking hole of the plate during bending. Bending is performed as shown. The bent plate is now repositioned on bone. The plate is now provisionally held in place by inserting a K-wire through a K-wire hole within the plate and into bone as shown. An advantage of provisional fixation with a K-wire is that the plate can be easily removed, manually bent using the bending pliers, and repositioned on the bone as shown. The excess K-wire can be cut using the Variax foot cutting pliers. These cutting pliers come with silicone inserts that are designed to grasp and retain the cut edge of a K-wire, preventing the K-wire from being ejected and flying through the operative theater. Care must now be taken to place the K-wire in the region of the cutting pliers highlighted with an arrow prior to cutting as shown. The K-wire is now cut. The cut wire of the K-wire is held in place within the cutting pliers as shown. Variax foot locking plates allow for polyaxial locking screws to be inserted within a plus minus 15 degree Variax angle foot drill guide must be used as shown. To ensure that pre-drilling of screw holes occurs within this plus minus 15 degree cone, when the drill guide is inserted within a screw hole as shown, the drill guide constrains the angle of drilling to plus minus 15 degrees as required. The oblique T-plate accepts 2.7 mm screws, which are associated with the black color coding. Therefore, the black color-coded drill guide must be used as shown. The drill guide is specifically inserted into the closest hole to the fusion site as shown.
The black color-coded drill is then inserted into the drill guide and bicortical drilling is performed. Importantly, a main advantage of the polyaxial locking technology found within Variax foot plates is if a pre-existing independent lag screw is already implanted, as indicated by this K-wire, the screw hole can be easily redirected in an angle designed to avoid the pre-implanted lag screw. For example, the drill can be directed more plantar, more dorsal, more proximal, or more distal as shown. Therefore, screw conflict can be avoided between a lag screw and a locking screw. The black color-coded depth measuring gauge is then used to determine the length of screw required. The hook of the depth measuring gauge is inserted through the plates and into the bone until the hook engages and hooks onto the far cortex. The near lip of the depth gauge must make firm contact with the plate. Screw measurement is then performed. The black color-coded screwdriver blade is inserted into the Variax foot screwdriver handle using the AO coupling as shown. The black color-coded screw capture sleeve is slid over the screwdriver blade as shown. The screwdriver rack clearly indicates the different lengths of screws available. Within the screwdriver rack, there are silver screws and gold screws. Silver screws are locking screws. Yellow screws are non-locking screws. In this case, an appropriate locking screw is chosen. The screwdriver blade is inserted into the head of a Variax foot locking screw. The screw capture sleeve is pushed downward to grasp and retain the chosen screw. The screw is then removed as shown. The locking screw is now inserted through the plate into the bone. As the screw head approaches the plate, the screw capture sleeve is disengaged and the screw is loosely tightened but not yet locked. The screw insertion process is then repeated for the remaining screws. Fixation is now complete and the K-wire used for provisional fixation of the plate can now be removed. Final tightening is now performed for all the remaining screws. It is recommended that two-finger tightening technique be performed to avoid applying excessive torque to the screws. The fusion site is now re-examined. Complete closure of the fusion site is reconfirmed. The bony step-off that was created by the plantar positioning of the metatarsal is illustrated. This step-off is now removed, as shown, to smooth the edges of the fused joint. The retractors are then removed and the position of the first ray is verified. Free range of motion is confirmed as shown. In conclusion, the osteotomy or fusion site does not move at all and the big toe is straight. Mm -hmm.